In a recent video, I created a holder and mount for a micro switch that was used in a filament runout sensor. I wanted to create my own design for two reasons. First, to ensure that it fits perfectly with the micro switch, and because I like my current filament setup and wanted a mount that would integrate with my setup. There's a lot of different applications where I would want to custom design something that doesn't already exist. That is the greatest attraction to being a 3D maker. I figured it was time to look into a CAD software to make it more easy to create precision parts. Looking around, I saw a lot of tutorials and documents about using Autodesk Fusion 360. Uh, I've used other Autodesk products before back in college, and I definitely think their software is great. Uh, but I'm just trying to lower my dependencies on proprietary software just to be more well-rounded and versatile. I found FreeCAD as the best alter alternative, though the documentation and amount of tutorials out there was quite lacking. It also doesn't look nearly as pretty as Fusion 360, but it does a lot and is simple to use. I'm still trying to figure things out myself, so I'm just going to use the basics for now. If you know better ways of doing things or know shortcuts, then let me know in the comments below. So with a fresh page, the first thing we want to do is go up to this bar where it says start and then pull it down to the parts page. Um, parts is where we're going to create all of our objects. So we're going to start off with a basic cube. That's the first thing. Uh, we have the viewfinder here and we can use the middle mouse button to click and um, change the angle. The top right widget allows us to set a specific face view. Um, now I have this diagram from the parts manufacturer. This is the dimensions for the micro switch. Helps to figure things out. Everything is in millimeters. I see from this chart that the micro switch is about two centimeters uh, going from left to right. So I'm going to adjust the box to uh, fit around there. Maybe to start off with like 30 or 40 centimeters. Uh, so I'm going to go over to the parts uh, property and change the width uh, and change the length. This will adjust the size and this will be the back plate of the uh, uh, cover. So most of this will be just uh, manipulating the properties panel in order to just adjust uh, the piece to the size that I want. Switch onto the back plate. Uh, I see that there's two holes in the micro switch. So I'm gonna create these two pegs, which will lock it in place. So for that, I'm gonna create a cylinder piece. And then I'm going just going to manipulate the uh, parameters in order to fit and adjust to, to fit inside these uh, uh, holes. So if I see from the diagram that the uh, depth of the micro switch is about 6.4 cent uh, millimeters. So on my panel, I'm going to set it for eight just to be longer. Uh, may maybe go down to seven uh, and adjust the radius and the other properties as well. Now the rest of it is mostly just creating parts, changing dimensions and just placing it where I need to be. Uh, it can be a little tedious and also going back to diagram, just making sure everything fits. Uh, but there is a better way so that we can uh, do it. And it works because this application uses a standard piece. So instead of going through the diagram, what I'm going to do is find a CAD model of the micro switch that I already have and be able to import it in here to use as a model guide. With this model imported, uh, I don't have to worry about uh, checking the diagram more because this model should have the same dimensions uh, as it would in real life. This, I just need to put it uh, into the proper position and I'll be able to prove whether it's already a good fit and that way it would take some of the guesswork out of it and it'll allow me to be more quick about creating the pieces I want. I can visually see it. It's just a better application. So I found this model by going to GrabCAD. Uh, GrabCAD is a community that has a bunch of resources for printers and other uh, designers and engineers. Um, they offer free CAD library. Uh, there's also other resources out there as well, but I just simply went to the first thing that came to mind and I just went and searched for micro switch and simply uh, just found the mo model that I needed and imported it into the free CAD. 
Now, with my ability to uh, properly measure things much speeding up much quicker, I can focus on actually building my design. Uh, navigating through FreeCAD, if you want to move an object, you just simply double click on it. It goes into a different panel with the widget where you can slide and pull it. Now, every time you make a property, it doesn't actually get applied until you move off of that field or you, you select the OK button in the task. So make sure you uh, properly do all that before you export it or else you're, got, you're not going to have everything that you need. Uh, if you need to hide a particular piece, you can just hit space bar on the uh, keyboard and it will immediately uh, toggle the visibility. You can also right click it and then toggle the visibility from there as well. So once you get the basics of adjusting the viewing angles, modifying the dimensions of an object, and learning how to move it around in space, the next big technique to learn about modeling is to use a Boolean. Boolean operation allows you to shape an object by using a second object to add or subtract from the first object's mesh. Here I'm going to be using the cylinder piece for its cross section in order to create a circular hole in the wall. I simply align the objects up with both objects selected. I then look at the top toolbar for a series of buttons that look like Venn diagrams, clicking on the second one to take the difference between the objects which gives us the hole. At any time, I can go back to the original cylinder object and adjust its dimensions in order to affect the shape and size of the hole. If I adjust the radius, the holes can be bigger or larger. I can also import STL files uh, of previous models into the FreeCAD in order to help align it. I can turn this into an edible mesh, but for now I'm just using it to make sure that I have everything aligned properly and that it would work conceptually. Um, in order to get everything to align and cut properly, I'm actually going to switch over to another uh, free tool called Blender to show you how to be able to edit models in Blender as well. Now, Blender is a very powerful modeling tool that has a lot of features, but a lot of those features are unnecessary for designing parts. However, it can still be used to achieve what we want. I'm going to delete all the objects in the scene and import the STL files for our filament guide and sensor box. My goal here is to place the sensor box that I created on top of the filament guide that I got from the internet and then fuse them together. If we were creating a model for rendering computer graphics, then I would worry about the topology of the mesh, the number of polygons and vertices, making sure the pieces don't overlap, and that the UV mappings are all defined for our material. Luckily, for 3D printing, we are only concerned about the shape of the object. As long as the body looks fine, then our slicer will do the rest to order to create the G code, which would direct the printers on how to print the object. With the objects in my scene, I'll have to place them in position, but I also want to make sure some modifications to the filament guide. First, I want to cut out the wire clip here. This clip is used to hold the cable from the hot end, but it's completely unnecessary for our application. I do like the wire clip, but one thing to consider when designing functional prints is that the clip here is pointed downwards, which would add another layer of dimension, which increases the complexity of the print. This means we would likely need supports regardless of the direction we plan to print in order to deal with the overhangs. While I would like to have maximum functionality, I'm willing to cut away some features if it would maximize the ease of printing, which will make the design more accessible. To do this, we will rely on our previous technique, the Boolean. First, we create a cube by going to the object view, add mesh cube. Then we will align it to cover the wire clip area I want to cut out. It's important to note that when an object has a modifier, like Boolean, the snapping feature does not work. So you have to try and do your best here uh, to align the pieces. Once it's aligned, we select the primary object, the filament guide, and go to the object properties on the bottom right and look for the tool wrench icon for the modifier tab. From the drop down selection, we grab the Boolean modifier then we use the eyedropper tool to select the cube. We can see that the uh, uh, effect happened instantly, uh, but you'll need to hide the visibility of the cube in order to see the results. The default operation of the Boolean modifier is 
difference. So you can, uh, don't worry about to mess with that change, but you can change it up if you want to try other options. Now I want to align the bottom of the sensor box to the bottom of this mount here. But if I move it down, I'm just going to mess with the alignment I have on top. So what I want to do is expand the bottom to cover the entire height. We'll be using another common modeling tool, which is the extruder. Extruding is when you want to take a face of a mesh and grow it out. First, we switch the object to edit view. Then we change the selection to face mode to select all the faces on the bottom of the sensor box. Then from the toolbar, we will select extrude. This will give a circular widget with a handle pointing in the direction perpendicular to the face. Now grabbing this handle will extrude the bottom of the surface, which will change the shape of the box. This is what we are trying to achieve here, but we need to align it to the bottom of the mount. Unlike with modifiers, we can use snapping here. Go to the comically looking magnet symbol at the top to enable the snapping feature. Make sure that the feature set for effect is set to scale. Scale has to be enabled because extrude is a type of scaling. Uh, once you have that set, make sure you drag the mouse wheel and highlight the area that you are trying to snap to. If you're not getting it to snap correctly, try uh, adjusting some of the other properties, uh, but it should snap once you have it set correctly. So this is looking pretty good and I think I'm ready to export it. I'm going to go to file, export, and I'm going to export as an STL file. You should be familiar with STL files now if you've been printing for a while. I'm going to import this file into my Kira slicer and then check it out. So here's Kira. I'm going ahead and import it. It looks great. Uh, I'm just going to do a quick visual check to make sure there that there's no gaps or anything I'm missing. Uh, it's great that it's flat in the orientation I want it. I want everyone just to be able to just load this up and be able to print to go. There shouldn't be any worrisome overhangs. There might be a little bit of an overhang in the holes, but there's holes are so small that it shouldn't be uh, a difference. Now, you can use a lot of different settings for this because it's a very simple shape. Um, I just use a basic standard 2.0. I'm going to hit slice and that's it. Uh, but before that, always check the preview. Uh, go through and check visually to make sure that uh, your uh, printer lines are correct because if your model created a wall that's too thin, then the slicer will actually disregard it because it's thinner than the, the diameter of the uh, plastic flow that you have in your settings. So, you know, let's say I'm, I'm using a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Um, if my wall is too thin, the slicer is going to be like, well, I'm, I can't print this out and I'm not even going to have it. So if you see gaps in your preview, then you know that the, the slicer would, has completely ignored that wall. Uh, so it's good to have the visual inspection to make sure that everything is correct. Um, if you do see gaps, you might have to go back to the model and make things slightly thicker um, or play things around. That's probably the easiest way to uh, fix those issues. So this is the end result of the product. I printed it out and everything works perfectly. Uh, though I did do a few prototypes before this. If you want to see uh, the video of how this filament sensor worked and all that, check out my other video. Now, uh, this is, I know it's a pretty rushed kind of video. It's not really as in detail as like a step-by-step -step guide. Uh, I just wanted to show the basics, um, the, uh, the tools that you need in order to build your own design. Um, you know, go, the, the basic tools I use are very common across all modeling uh, software. So once you learn uh, how to use Booleans and extruding and just uh, modifying the parts properties, that's all you really need to do. It's not that complicated. Um, if you want to get complicated, then you get into more details like doing complex shapes, uh, uh, helixes, uh, circles, uh, spheres, um, things like that um, it will, will be a, probably a different video. but. For now, you know, if you're just trying to replace a, a broken piece or if you're just trying to uh, create something uh, small, then, you know, just go ahead and try playing around with the uh, simple basic objects. Uh, uh, use the simple uh, booleans. You don't even have to use FreeCAD or Blender. You can use any, any pretty much any software. There's even some simple ones like Sketch 3D or uh, SketchUp that you are, are even some browser-based uh, 3D tools that can uh, give you simple shapes. So, you know, um, thanks for watching this video and I hope you guys learned something. Um, you know, let me know if you have any suggestions, comments, 
Um, and until next time, stay dorky.